Hey everybody, welcome back to the Readiness Channel. Today we're going to be talking all about, oh crud, how to prepare for power outages and blackouts. You know, it's easy to think about a power outage as just being the minor inconvenience that we often deal with at home when the lights go out. In the arena of preparedness, however, we need to broaden our scope a little bit and think about uh, things that can become very serious to us, such as our communications going down gas services to your home being shut down or inoperable for a length of time, transportation services, uh, banks, ATMs, uh, things like grocery stores and retail services would likely be shut down in a widespread or long-term event. And let's not forget the electric motors that operate the pumps on many of our municipal water pump systems. Remember, these aren't going to be operating when the power goes out. Are you one of those people that likes to play the, I've got plenty of fuel when your gas gauge looks like this game? Try to get in the habit of not letting your fuel tank go below halfway. And in doing that, you'll be much better prepared in the event the power goes out and fuel stations are no longer operating. And these won't work either. All of these money and debit type cards that we've all become so reliant upon to do our purchasing will be absolutely worthless in the event of a blackout. It's important to keep a good emergency supply of cash on hand at all times, therefore giving you some purchasing power when the power is out. And these aren't going to be working either. You know, it's easy to take for granted something like the fridge and the freezer in our homes that we rely on on a daily basis. However, in a long-term power outage, that could put you and your family in a real bind. Come up with a food triage plan that you know you're going to employ in the event the power goes out for an extended period. Obviously, cooking foods that are uh, perishable or closer to going bad or spoiling first and then consuming them and other foods that have a longer shelf life or are frozen later. Uh, think about things like storing and freezing some plastic jugs like this, milk containers, soda bottles, whatever you have, and keep them in your freezer at all times. That will do two things for you. When the power goes out, that will help keep your freezer colder longer. Additionally, some of these could be transferred over into the refrigerator and help maybe keep that colder for a longer period of time. It's common knowledge that we need to keep these doors closed in the event of a power outage. Don't forget about the medications that require refrigeration that maybe a family member in your household uh, relies on for their very life. Talk to your doctor or pharmacist and come up with a working strategy and a plan on the things that you can do to store these things safely when the power goes out. In addition to the medications, don't forget about electrically operated medical devices that many people rely on for their very lives. Many of these pieces of equipment might be able to be found with battery backup systems installed. Talk with your medical provider and find out what options are available for you or your family member to use and operate this type of equipment during a blackout. Sometimes a generator or other alternative power source may be the only answer and it would definitely be part of your emergency planning if somebody in your home relies on this type of equipment. High efficiency ice chests like Yeti's and other brands like you see pictured here could become a very useful tool for you and your household during a long-term blackout. It's possible that pulling out some of the frozen water bottles we talked about earlier, placing them in a smaller container like this might be a storage solution for your medications as well as foods and other items that you need to preserve. A simple refrigerator thermometer like you see pictured here will help prevent you from taking any unnecessary risks by providing potentially dangerous foods or medications to your family members. Okay, now let's talk about some gear. Probably one of the number one anxiety inducing problems in any blackout is the sudden darkness. That sudden darkness causes people to feel panic and distress and you don't need to have those feelings when basic tools like this are available and are relatively inexpensive. I'm going to just talk about some of the stuff that I have in my kit give you some ideas and maybe inspire you in some way about things that might work in your area. Uh, one of my favorites right now has been these LED garden lights that we put in our yard. The last time the power went out, I simply went outside, pulled them out of the backyard, brought them in, and I've got an instant, very bright light source that will burn throughout most of the night. These come in a lot of different sizes and shapes. I bought these years ago to throw in our emergency kit. They're uh, easily just placed wherever you need them throughout your home and they provide a good light source. Think about elderly uh, people and your children that might need to use the restroom and things like that. 
what you don't want happening is trips and falls and medical emergencies to occur because the power is out in your home. Simple flashlights are often, uh, they're such a basic tool that everybody has in their home, but I think that causes them to be somewhat ignored and overlooked. There are a lot of good high quality flashlights available today that put out a lot of light with the LED bulbs and have a long run time on the batteries that they carry. Take the time to check your lights, operate them, have a interval that you replace the batteries in them, maybe on New Year's and, and during July 4th or whatever. Pick something that works for you so that they're not all corroded and gummed up when it comes time to use them. Some other basic lights that are readily available. This one here is one of my favorites. Uh, these simple headband type lights have the obvious advantage of providing light for you while your hands are free and you can continue working or doing whatever you have to do. Some of these have the low light red light function on them so you don't blow out your night vision. That might come in handy in certain circumstances during a blackout. You'll often see these types of lights at the checkout registers and things like that in stores. Don't overlook some of these. They have very bright LED lights in them with hooks that can be placed anywhere doing auto repair, uh, some type of repair work or maintenance that you might have to do it in your home. Uh, they're a very handy tool and they cost very little money. One of our favorites has been these LED camping lanterns. We've used this many times in blackouts at our house and they put out a good amount of light they have a long run time on just a few AAA batteries. So tools like this can go a long way to make you and your family have a feeling of normalcy in these distressing events. Remember to triage and check your batteries and your emergency kit. Some of these things can get thrown in there and might be a lot older than you think. So check the expiration dates, maybe test them to see if they're good, and maybe think about replacing some of those if they're getting up there in age. Batteries are relatively cheap, but boy, could they be a life-saving tool for you to operate these instruments in a power outage situation. Additionally, don't overlook these packs of cheap flashlights that you often find in the stores. These can come in handy for children, to throw in your purse, to throw in your day pack, your bug out bag, whatever you have. I think everyday carry items like this are absolutely essential to think about because you may not be at home when the power goes out. Candles are a poor choice for an emergency light source, in my opinion. They offer very little light output and are a fire hazard in your home. And let's not forget, we're going to want to charge these things during a blackout. Simple tools like cords that you can plug into your car's power port and charge your phones. There are solar and hand crank chargers like you see here that will allow you to power them up. There are solar charging pads that are specific to charging up devices and phones. There are remote power banks, generators, the list goes on and on. The important thing is, is pick something uh, that works for you and have a plan on how you're going to charge these devices when the power goes out and keep your communications up. Now let's take a quick look at some of the backup power sources that are available to anybody's emergency response plan. Some of these battery bank systems like Jackery and their other manufacturers that make similar products could be very useful during power outages due to the fact that they have solar charging capability which would come in very useful in a long-term outage. All internal combustion engine operated generators must be run outside and away from open windows. Never operate this kind of equipment inside of your garage or anywhere near the inside of your home and avoid very dangerous and lethal carbon monoxide poisoning. Contrary to the belief of some, these machines are not designed to be plugged into your home's electrical system and therefore powering up your whole home like you would normally be operating in when the power is on. That would require very specific design and engineering by an electrician and the appropriate generator to go along with that plan. Additionally, these machines require the use of fuel, obviously, to run, so that becomes problematic in a long-term event and will have to be part of your emergency planning as well. On the higher end of the scale are these home generator systems that are hardwired into your home's electrical system. These have the distinct advantage of clicking on automatically when the power goes out so that you don't have any real disruption to the way your home is functioning. On the other hand, these are also uh, dependent on fuel, so in a long-term event, you would still have the issue 
of needing fuel to run and operate these systems. Hey everybody, we touched on the topic of carbon monoxide a minute ago, and I just thought I would take a second and talk about the value of this life-saving tool that you see uh, pictured here in front of you. This simple little alarm that costs less than $20 could be a life-saving tool for you and your family in any situation, including power outages and these types of events. Uh, this little tool will keep you safe from this odorless, colorless, tasteless gas that can be permeating your home and you and your family members not even be aware of it. As one that has seen the results of carbon monoxide poisoning and the resulting death several times in my prior profession, I can't tell you uh, how important I believe this little investment is to have in every home. Many of our modern homes have these automatic garage door openers installed in them, but what do you do when the power goes out? Most of these systems have a manually operated uh, release, like you see with this red line hanging down from the rack right there on mine. If I pull that down, it simply disengages the chain drive, allowing me to manually lift up the garage door. Be sure to research and understand your particular system at your house so that you know how to get out of the garage in the event of a power outage. In all emergency preparedness planning, we always start back at the foundation, and that is food, water, and a well-stocked first aid kit. All of these things are essential items for you to have for blackouts. And don't forget about things like games, books, and other activities you and or your children might enjoy doing while the power's out. All of these kinds of things will help keep a sense of normalcy in your home when boredom starts setting in. Okay, so the power went out and I've brought out some emergency lights. The first thing I did was went around the house and unplugged any electrical devices that I would be concerned about being damaged from surge when the power comes back on. Typically it's best to leave at least one light on as a signal to you that the power uh, has been restored when it does come back on. Additionally, think about safety concerns for you and your family. During storms and other events like that that could cause power outages, it's not a good idea for you or your kids to go walking around outside in the dark to see what's going on and potentially step on some live power lines that may be down, uh, laying in and around outside your home that you can't see in the dark. Hey, thanks for watching today's video. If you appreciate the content that we put out for you today, be sure to hit the like and subscribe button down below. Those things help us out with the channel. And as always, remember, Get ready so that you and your family can succeed and thrive. Hey everybody, welcome back to the Readiness Channel. Today we're going to be talking all about, no oh crud, how you can prepare for power outages and, oh, the power's back on, screw it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>